morning, everyone. Here we have a live view of screen capture, I believe, from Mount Rainier from the National Park Service. You can see the recent snows from all the storms that have been hitting the West Coast. And there was an article posted on the Daily Mail uh, claiming that there was a 72-hour period of volcanic tremors starting around November 15th and described as being non-stop seismic sign signatures on the western flank and being a potential precursor to an eruption. So a lot of people are wondering what's going on there at Mount Rainier, and I'm going to dive into this uh, latest information that I found. So stick with me, and I'm going to show you the monitors and what I think is actually happening. Hi everyone, I'm Mary with Mary Greeley News. Thank you very much for joining me. Please like, share, and subscribe. And I want to give a shout out to Charles who recently bought me 10 cups of coffee. And also a shout out to Jane who bought me a super sticker here on YouTube. Thank you very much. God bless you. You guys are angels in disguise. Mount Rainier remains an active but dormant stratovolcano with a volcano alert level normal aviation code green according to the latest USGS Cascadia Volcano Observatory week update that was posted on November 14th. All Cascadia volcanoes including Rainier are at normal background activity levels and there's been small earthquakes that continue to occur that they say are consistent with historical averages about 10 per month, and that there is no sign of unusual deformation, gas emissions, or magmatic unrest, indicating an impending eruption. This image keeps moving because it keeps updating, and here you can see we got long duration seismic activity. This image is a real time heliocorder drum plot display from the Pacific Northwest Seismic Network. PNSN, most likely from the station RCM, Rainier uh, Camp 400, Camp Murr, on the upper south flank, oh, probably about 10,000 foot elevation for uh, that station area. This covers roughly about 24 hours, and each horizontal line is one hour of data. The thick black lines, let me move it over so you can see the time here. Let me bring it up. And it just updated again. So I keep bringing the image back down. Anyways, the thick black lines are not normal background uh, noise. This represents periods of nearly continuous high amplitude seismic tremors or very frequent small earthquakes merging together on the plot. The blue line spikes scattered throughout um, this image, such as this one up here, are individual earthquakes. And we got some more over here. The dense red and black zone indicate that there's so many earthquakes that it can't pick them up individually. And it's saturating the plot that's being recorded. A recent article that I found said that the uh, glaciers are melting. So with the uh, recent rains, more than likely, yeah, that could be the culprit. What's going on here? The water seeping down into the fault lines and creating hydrothermal tremors, not magma movement. The reason being, this station is near the summit ice cap, typical for glacier quakes or ice movement. I'll give you a link to this web page and it shows the recent earthquakes that has been posted by uh, um, P S uh, whatever. And you can see here on the 15th there was a 0 0.4, uh, the 10th a 0 0.6, a 0 0.5, a 1.4. Yeah, and they don't list all the earthquakes as you can see by the, mo by the uh, monitor. There's an image of another monitor and the different quakes. Yeah, and the slow moving tremor. See how it just moved on me as it updated? Let me bring this over. 
and you can see that there's a lot of small microquakes that they are not reporting. The monitors that I am using, one is off over here on the uh, western side, and the other one is up over here towards the north. You can click on any of these monitors and then uh, view the uh, seismogram. Here's an image of that one that I just showed you. It's pretty useless. Several of these volcanoes are connected under the ground. Probably about eight miles is uh, the depth of the magma chamber, and it generally flows from the west uh, to the east. So let's take a look at this one right here. Yeah, you definitely can see all the earthquakes. Uh, not a lot of slow moving tremors. You know, there's one there, and I can't make it bigger. I'm sorry. But we have other significant earthquakes. So, yeah, the magma is moving. Um, yeah, creating, um, it's, it's all popping. When I made the uh, image for the other one bigger, that's probably as large as I can make it. But you can see it's all sharpened points, which means we got the ground um, popping. Possibly from the water opening up the different faults in the crust of the earth. And the uh, gas readings of late are at normal background levels. Here's another image I got. You can see all the recent snow. And another webcam. Th this here is from Tatouche. And you can see it's today's date, November 19th, uh, 7.08 a.m. there at Mount Rainier. And another image. Um, it just says mountain. That's all it is. Um, 7.09 a.m. What is going on with these earthquakes? Um, this pattern has happened many times in the, in the past. You know, when winter temperatures swing and snow loads cause ice breaks and, yeah, the crevices open up. And these episodes can last days, two weeks, and then fade out on their own. The last notable earthquake swarm there on Mount Rainier was between July and late August of this year. There was over 1,350 earthquakes. Um, yeah, thousands of them, too small to locate. Um, even the largest event, which was a magnitude 2.4, that was uh, July 11th of this year. Um, the average depth of these earthquakes have been 1.8 miles or 4.5 kilometers beneath the summit in the shallow crust. The recent swarm is probably associated with hydrothermal activity, pressurized hot water, and steam that is circulating through the cracks above the magma system, not rising magma. You would see ground deformation, and there hasn't been any ground deformation from the GPS data. No major new studies on Mount Rainier have been done this year other than, you know, taking the elevation of the ice caps. They say that they're, they're currently melting. So the, those images and data was probably taken from afar. I don't think they actually went up there to survey. The primary magma reservoir exists anywhere between 5 and 9 miles or 8 to 15 kilometers deep beneath the volcano. And it's partly melted, partial melt, estimated between uh, 20 and 30% melt in some areas. Here you can see at the lower elevation, yeah, how everything is wet from the rains. You know, the roads are all wet. We got some little mist of fog, it looks like. And I'll bring it over for you. This image is, is from uh, Long Mire. Now, Mount Rainier is considered one of the U.S.'s highest threat volcanoes due to its large glaciers, uh, potentially uh, massive mud flows and lahars if there was a, a future eruption in the proximity to populated areas like Seattle and Tacoma region. The last minor eruption um, occurred in 1890. And ma major ones often occur every few thousand years. So it's good people are concerned, especially if you live, you know, in that area. I've talked about the monitoring for Lahars in the past videos. Um, but this is what's currently showing. 
And like I said, it's it's showing uh, pointy tops, which means the crust of the earth is cracking. And you know, the faults are probably opening up uh, because of that water that's saturating down in through the uh, glaciers. But no large um, earthquakes. This one right here is probably the largest, and I don't think they even reported it. That's all I have for you right now. If you do have any thoughts or comments, please put your comments down below. Thank you very much for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe. And I'll talk to you later. God bless you.